The period between the death of Peter the Great and the accession of Catherine the Great, 1725 to 1762, has been considered by some historians as an era of shallowness, confusion, and decay, whereas others attribute to it much of Russia's spiritual growth and political advancement. The truth seems to lie on both sides. Rapid and violent changes, as under Peter, were discontinued, but slowly the process of westernization went on, gaining in depth and leading to a better proportion between the ambitions and actual potentialities of the country. Historian Walter Kirshner. Welcome to Russian History Retold, Episode 189, Elizabeth, Ivan VI, Anna, Peter II, and Catherine the First. Last time, we reassessed the reigns of Catherine the Great and her husband, Peter the Third. Today, we will do the same for the five Russian rulers of which only one, Elizabeth, was to have a true lasting impact on her country, with Empress Anna having a little bit as well. So let's start with Catherine the First, who was the wife of Peter the Great. When he died on February 8, 1725, there was some debate on who would take over as the next ruler, but Peter had made her his choice. Despite having a falling out with her recently over an issue revolving around William Mons, but nonetheless, she was made empress of all of Russia. Of everything that can be said of her time as a Russian ruler, only one can be pointed out as significant, her being the first woman to hold the position. It opened the door for Anna, Elizabeth, and of course, her namesake, Catherine the Great, to rule Russia as women for a period of about 67 out of 71 years. A truly remarkable feat, considering the culture of male domination in Russian society at the time. I know some of you are going, wait a minute, there was Olga during the time of the Kievan Rus. But that was long ago and not taken to, into account at this time. Still, her reign was quite short as she passed away in 1727. Pyotr Alexeyevich Romanov was made czar as he was the only male child of Peter the Great's son, Alexei, and his wife, Princess Charlotte of brunswick lundberg who died ten days after her son's birth. Peter II was 12 years old when he became czar, and initially Alexander Menshikov served as his regent. But due to his arrogance and domineering attitude toward Peter, he was eventually banished to Siberia. The Supreme Privy Council and the powerful Dol Dolgorukov family knew that in order to keep the Romanov family line intact and their power base strong, they needed to marry the young Tsar quickly. The choice was the 18-year-old Alexeyevna Dolgorukovna with whom the 14-year-old boy was smitten. The marriage date was set for January 30th, 1730, but unfortunately, Peter had become infected with smallpox in December, and as was often the case in those days, the disease proved fatal. He died at dawn on the morning of his wedding day. Little can be assessed of his reign except speculation based on an analysis of Peter's personality. From what has been handed down over the years was that he was not a very disciplined person and many of his contemporaries were concerned with his ability to govern once he became of age to rule. After the sudden and premature death of Peter II, the male line of the Romanov dynasty was extinguished. After much debate, the Supreme Privy Council yet again needed to decide who would be the next ruler of Russia. Looking at all of the possibilities, they wanted to come up with someone pliable and easy to influence, so they chose the childless and widowed princess of Courland, Anna. She was forced to sign what is known as the Conditions before coming to St. Petersburg. Within a few months, Anna repudiated them and sent many of those in the council to either hang or be exiled in Siberia. Empress Anna was the daughter of Peter the Great's half-brother, Ivan V. Anna 
Ivanovna was born on January 28, 1693, to the aforementioned Anna and Paskovia Saltikova. Her mother was a remarkable woman who was married to a mentally and physically challenged husband. When he died in February 1696 and Peter I took sole control of the government, she held him with great respect and in turn he let her serve as the Dowager Tsarina until her death in 1723. Anna was raised in this environment as a member of the court, but with very little thought of her ever ruling Russia, as Peter already had an heir, Alexis, from his first wife, Eudoxia. When Anna was 17, Peter arranged for her to be married to Frederick Willem, Duke of Courland, a Baltic province. Unfortunately, he died after the wedding on the way back to Courland, only 20 miles out of St. Petersburg. Anna would rule Courland for the next 20 years. Anna's ten-year reign of Russia was one of a continuation of Peter the Great's policies. While the government she oversaw with Ernst von Byron was good for the nation, it was terribly unpopular. As the Saxon minister Lefort would say, her rule was, quote, comparable to a storm-threatened ship manned by a pilot and crew who were all drunk and asleep. The Empress's court was lavish, spending huge sums of money which strained the treasury already under enormous pressure due to the ongoing and expensive Turkish wars and the War of Polish Succession, both of which caused the deaths of tens of thousands of Russian men. Shortly before her death in 1740, after ten years as the ruler of Russia, Anna named her infant grandnephew Ivan VI as her heir, blocking any of Peter the Great's descendants from gaining the throne, even though Ivan was still just a baby. Empress Anna died at the age of 47, childless of a painful kidney stone. Ivan VI, now only two months old, was proclaimed emperor with Ernst Johann von Byron named regent. His time was short as Ivan's mother, Anna Leopoldovna, had him arrested. She took over as regent for the next year until Elizabeth staged her coup d'etat. His reign, if you could call it that, lasted from October 28, 1740 to December 6, 1741. It started when he was a mere 66 days old. When Elizabeth took control, Ivan and his family were put into the prison fortress of Dunamunda. From there, the Empress had Ivan sent to Kolmogori on the White Sea, where for the next 12 years, he was isolated from all others except his jailer. When it became known to the public where Ivan was staying, he was moved to Schlisselburg in 1756. When a plot emerged to release him led by Vasily Mirovich, he was murdered by one of the officers, as Catherine the Great had made it known, if he tries to escape, he's to be killed. It is said by that time he was completely insane because of the extreme isolation he was put into, so his death may have been his blessing. On the night of November 25, 1741, with the help of the Priobrazhensky Regiment, Elizabeth staged the coup that was to bring her to power and set poor Ivan off to a life of misery. She was as quoted as saying to the troops, quote, Whom do you want to serve? Me? your natural sovereign, or those who have stolen my inheritance. Elizabeth Petrovna was one of only two children to survive adulthood from the twelve children Peter the Great and Catherine I had. She was very much Peter's daughter, but since he had a male heir in his son, Alexei Petrovich, Elizabeth was not groomed for anything but marriage. But since Alexei had died in prison, the line of succession became less clear, making Elizabeth's coup a likely means of gaining power and protecting oneself, especially a woman who could easily be sent to a nunnery. Empress and autocrat of all the Russians, Elizabeth was a larger-than-life figure who would have been the greatest of all female Russian rulers 
if not for the girl she handpicked to be the wife of her nephew, a girl who would become Catherine the Great. She is still considered one of the most popular Russian rulers, in part due to her position against the death penalty. Elizabeth is also known for her opulent building projects in St. Petersburg, with the continued construction of Peterhof, Tsarskoye Selo, the Winter Palace, and the Smolny Cathedral. Elizabeth was also wildly popular in her time because of her removal to exile of the numerous German advisors at the Russian court. Chief among them were Heinrich Ostermann, Burkhard von Munich, and Karl Gustav Lohenwald. Like her father Peter in some ways, like their mutually strong personalities and intelligence, she was also unlike him as she was somewhat lazy, not very educated, and extremely vain. When it comes to domestic issues, her spending was crippling the Russian economy. It's been said that she owned over 15,000 dresses and had so depleted the treasury that a French milliner had to cut off her credit. Her building spree in St. Petersburg added to the problems, but it was the debasing of the coinage and the tax on vodka that proved ruinous. These last two policies were put in place at the behest of one of her court favorites, Peter Shuvalov. One of the changes that occurred in the court with the removal of the Germans was the increase in the use of the French language, which would grow until the 1812 invasion by Napoleon. Still, even after that, French was the language of the elite, and it is thought that Elizabeth and later Catherine was the impetus. In reassessing Elizabeth, it can be said that she continued the westernization of Russia as her father had, but without the brute force that he used. In all, she was a stabilizing ruler who used the Russian treasury as her personal playground, setting the stage for future rulers to do the same. Being the five heads of state of Russia between the times of the two titans, Peter I and Catherine II, makes it difficult to say very much. Elizabeth was the only one we could say was notable, which may be due to it being the longest reign at 20 years. One other event during her reign was to have a major impact on European and world history, the Seven Years' War. It was an alliance of France, Russia, Austria, Spain, and Sweden against Great Britain, Prussia, Portugal, and Hanover. Her side was actually winning the war and had Frederick the Great of Prussia on the ropes with him even con contemplating suicide when news came that Empress Elizabeth had died. With her, jet her nephew Peter III taking over, he snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, giving the British and Prussians the victory which changed European history forever. This was truly a nexus point that would have changed everything in world politics dramatically. The British gained the most from this change and became the preeminent power in Europe and the world. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Join me next time when we take another look at one of the, if not the greatest of all Russian rulers, Peter the Great. So now, as always, das vidanya. Is passiva bolshoya.